Now that you've finished lessons one through three in project two, now we're going to go ahead and build your own blog theme. And you might wonder the content. This content is going to be three things that um, are about you. So maybe you have one about your family, another about school, and another about um, a sport that you play. Or maybe you have uh, one about the ATM program. You have one about uh, animals because you love pets. You know, and you have another one about saving the environment because that's really important to you. You could have one about your, your church, one about uh, your family, and one about school. You choose what your topics are going to be about, but this is going to be about you. Okay, so to get started, let's go ahead and clean up this uh, HTML and CSS. All HTML and CSS start with doc type, so we're going to leave that alone. All HTML has head, you're going to have a closing head, it all has body, and you have a closing body, so never get rid of that. Inside is some things that we could change. Uh, this you learned in the last section, leave that there, you've already typed it, no need to type it again. Uh, CSS, to make your websites pretty, you need to have a style tag. It's not the only way to use CSS, but because our web pages are fairly short, this is how we're doing it this time. Uh, in here is the ways that we style things. For example, text align center, if I took that off, it would now go to the left side. I'm gonna bring that back, it's fine for now. Uh, background, I already took off the link because I don't wanna have that image. I put a hashtag between the quotation marks, please do that too, so that you remember later on to put something here that represents you. Background size, keep that there. Color, I changed mine just to show you what happened when I changed uh, the color of the header. Okay, uh, A are the links. It's the about me, best poems, and worst poems. If I was to change that color like to blue, you'll see what it looks like, but it's hard to see. Uh, you can leave that alone, but just know that you can style that differently later. H1 is the size of Jeff's blog. Image, that's about the image here at the top. Uh, what's cool is I changed my border radius. It used to be, I think, 30 and that rounded the corners. If you want to make a circle, you could just make that a lot bigger. I made it 300, for example, uh, and it will be a perfect circle, which is cool. People often want to ask me how to like make a circle with their image. Um, UL padding, that's to do with uh, this. Uh, we'll leave that alone. Uh, when, you, when you do RGB, you might know that means red, green, blue. The A is for transparency. So if you bring this 0.5 up, it's going to be darker. If you bring it down, it's going to be lighter. So if you have an image in the background, you could see it better. Uh, we'll leave it alone, and you could always play with it later. Li, that's these. You made it in line. If you took that away, your page is going to look a lot different. If you, know, if you don't know what something does, just play with it and edit on to get it back. Article, we'll just leave this alone. Uh, all of this stuff here is JavaScript stuff. And that makes things happen. For example, if I click like, it doesn't happen yet. But if I click run JavaScript and now I click like, it's going to tell me that it's clicked. Ooh, pretty cool, right? But not that exciting. I could always change what it says. OK, that's the end of the style tag. Just keep all of that. Head, that ends the head. That needs to be done. Please don't change that. Um, and then we start the body. Uh, this tells us what picture we're going to have in uh, the head. You're welcome to leave that there, or you can just get rid of the link and put a hashtag which says, hey, I'm going to put a link later. The picture is broken right now. There's nothing there. Uh, title, just blog. This is where you can change it to your own name. This, this isn't really a blog, so we're going to change that to Ms. Milton's whole web page. That's just about you. You could even change it to about me. And please don't put Ms. Melton's webpage. This is about you. Oops, I keep making typos about me. Okay. Um, here, this, see that hashtag? That's just a placeholder. Later on, that's going to be a link. This is a, a link to maybe the ATM program if I'm talking about ATM here. Here I want to talk about how cool dogs are, so I might find a website about dogs. Um, 
Anyways, so these are going to be links and I'll show you how to code these even better later on. You like better? Yes, a little different. Uh, articles, that's great. We'll leave this here. It's, it's good content for now, but please don't leave it like this. You need to replace it with content that of your own. Okay, so this is fine and it's a good bone so you don't have to rewrite your entire page. Um, I do want to explain about images because you're going to want, in this project, you are going to need an image. And I just don't want one image here. I actually want an image for each of your topics as well. So you could place it um, below your title and above your writing or right below your writing. But I do want four images on the screen. I guess if you include a background image, that would be five images total on your screen. Now, when you put an image, you can't hot link. What's hot linking? Hot linking is when you take a uh, URL from another website that doesn't belong to you and you put it in your code. The reason why um, web pe that's kind of against the uh, manners, against, I guess that's what it is. You can do it, but it is against manners of the web. It's because if you put an image URL in your site, it's going to slow down the host site. Whoever is hosting that image is going to get too much traffic. So they don't like it. In fact, Pixabay, for example, though you're allowed to use their images, they tell you not to hotlink. In fact, if you try, you're going to get an ugly image on your, pa on your page that says, you're hotlinking, fix this. So I'm going to show you how to host images yourself. To do this, I've already gone to Unsplash, and I want to talk about my love of dogs. So I found this great website, this great picture here and it's gonna be part of my website, and I, I love it. Um, I'm gonna use it, this one's pretty cute too. Oh, it's so hard to choose, there's so many great pictures here in, in Unsplash. Uh, okay, let me click this one, which means download. You can't hot link to this image, but I can download it. And it does say the photo credit, so I'm just gonna copy this and put it in my code that I'm using it. Um, for now, I'm just gonna put it, it's called a footer, I'll go ahead and, um, no, this is the JavaScript part of it, I'll keep that. So at the bottom of my article above the script, I'm going to make a footer tag. And in my footer tag, I'm just going to place uh, some photo credits here. And I'll get back to this later, but just so I don't lose this. This is one way. There's actually a better way of, of um, giving attribution, but I'll show you that later. At least it's here. Okay, so I don't lose that. Um, actually, let me show you the better way. Sorry. Let's. It says embed a credit badge. This is even cooler. I'm going to click embed a credit, credit badge. It's going to give me this link here. I'm going to copy it. And I'll just pretend that this first paragraph is going to be about my love of dogs. So I'm going to put dog lover. And I'll put it above the button. I'll just paste in this code. Here is a photo credit. It's a lot, as you see. Ooh but I didn't have to type it, I just had to paste it in. So here is all this um, photo credit. It actually links to the picture of the dog that I want to use. So that's the better way of doing a photo credit. Um, it, Unsplash does it for us, other websites don't, but you could look in the code if you really wanted to and figure out how it's done. Okay, so to get the picture, I, I need to download the picture. I think I've already done that, it's right here. And now I'm going to go to my Google Drive. And I need to create a new folder. And I'm just going to call this my web pages. In the folder, my web pages, I'm going to make another folder because I might have different web pages later. Um, make another folder and just call this dash 
project two. Okay, so cool. Now I don't want to be in Dash Project 2 yet. I want you to be in my web pages, so it says it right here. And I want you to change the share settings. Share. And go to advanced. And where it says who has access, I'm going to change that and make it public on the web. The reason why is you want to make sure all the photos that you have, people can see. And if it's only LBUSD, then only kids here can see, but your families or friends can't see that don't go to our school. So now everything that you put in this web, this folder is public if you share it with anyone. That's important. Very, very important. Otherwise, your images on your website will show up as can't be seen. Okay, now let's go to Dash Project 2. And I'm going to take that picture. Oh, whoa, that was close. I almost made a mistake. Let's not do that yet. Let's put it on our desktop. You could have done it this way, but the Dash, but these uh, photos from Unsplash are such high quality that they are going to slow down your web page. And that's really annoying when you have to wait for a page to load because of a picture taking a while, especially if you have more than one picture. So once you put it on your desktop, we're going to make it a smaller photo so it's not so big. And let's go ahead and double click on it. To show you how high quality this is, I'm going to go to uh, view and put actual size. Whoa, this picture is ginormous. I'm not going to put it this large on my screen, so it'd be wasting um, space to have this image. I can make this image a lot smaller, like more, a lot closer to the size I'm going to use it on my, on my page. So I'm going to go to um, uh, Tools, and I'm going to click this button here, Adjust Size. Right now, its width is 2560 pixels. That's really big. I'll show you, if I, if I change that to like 400, let's see what that looks like. And just change the width. The height will change automatically. And I'm going to go to view. It's already actual size. Is that, what, is that the size on my website? Probably. I think that's really good, actually. 400 wide makes it that big. Uh, I think that's perfect. If you want to make it larger than that, you would go and change it, but you can actually code it to be smaller, but I think this is perfect. Okay, so 400 wide is a good rule of thumb. Uh, okay, now I'm going to close it. Now that I made my picture smaller in size, oh, I changed something else. If I press control click, I don't know what the size was before. I can check it in a moment, but if I get info, It's now um, 37,000 bytes, and before I put it, and then I'll put it in my Google Drive. And I'll tell you what the original was. Oh well, the original was a lot larger. It probably was like seven megabytes or something like that. So I've made this a lot smaller in size and it's not gonna slow down my web page. Okay, now that I have it here to code it into my website, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and click the I for info, click details. Try that again. Click on the picture first and then I for I and then details. Um, and all I've got to do is press control click on the picture and choose copy image address. I know that's a lot of steps, but you'll get better at this. Um, then go back to my code and I'm going to paste that picture right above where I put the photo credit. it be right here. Uh, it's, the link is not good enough. You need to code it as an image tag. If you're like, I don't remember how to do an image tag, it's right here. I'm just going to copy that, paste it, and see that hashtag right here? Command V. And then the picture showed up. Um, 
yay, looks really nice. What a great picture. It actually looks really good on my page. Uh, you might say, I don't want the, um, the photo credit right next to it. I want it right under it. Okay. All you have to do after your image is put a, B, it's called a break tag. And now the photo credit goes right underneath it. The like looks like it's a like of the, of the image. I guess that's fine. I don't mind because really they're not really liking what you say because I'm talking about how dogs are important to me and my pets and things like that and how I care about dogs and humane society. So that's not really like, but I understand liking the image. That actually works really well. If you want the like on the next line though, you could just put another BR tag. Okay, enough of me talking. Go make your wonderful web pages. Be creative, be informative, make sure you spell things correctly and have fun.